Hi everyone. Welcome back to my channel and our simple abundance here. I wanted to come back and wrap up October with you and also to say a couple of things. As you know, we're following through Sarah Von Bronick's book, Simple Abundance, this year. And it's her 2019 newly revised edition. And at the beginning of October, and when I laid out what we were going to talk about, I mentioned that we were going to be doing some financial budgeting talks and about abundance and things like that. And that's because that's my memory of October. And that's what's in the old book. This is her old um, day book of comfort and joy that I've had since the 1990s. So I didn't go over those. I honestly didn't even know where the older version of the book was until just today because I'm unpacking, as you know, if you follow my channel. So I think I'm going to trickle some of those entries over into November and I'll do them all together because there's a bunch of entries that I think that we would all benefit from and just talking about abundance in general. Today's entries are sort of tied into that idea in some respect as far as knowing what matters a little bit more than possessions and then I just want to touch upon the end of the month is always the caution closet discussion. So that's my plan for today. So in her entry called by love possessed i hope you'll read this one because she goes into detail about a story of and i've forgotten their names already um margaret reed and james reed so they were pioneers back when you would cross over to california and she didn't want to go she didn't want to leave all of her stuff and they were fairly wealthy apparently and so her husband said like well if we're going to do this then i'll just make sure that we have all of our fine possessions and you know he just decked out this covered wagon like nothing had ever been like that before and they happened to be a part of the donner party if you know what that is so they're all these people that were stranded and had to spend the winter um together and there were some people that ate other people just to survive and I don't think they killed them to eat them but I think once they passed away they must have eaten them I don't know the details of it but anyway uh, this Margaret Mead Reed even though she was you know had all these possessions and stuff that's not why she survived she she had her kids eating you know uh, tree bark and and snow and all that and she kept her whole family alive and Sarah makes a point that you know it didn't have anything to do with her possessions like she definitely could have been one of the people that perished and so like when it comes down to life and death our possessions really they don't determine whether we live or die I mean look at although I'm just thinking I was about to say look at the Titanic although there were people in the third class area that never even had a chance to get on a lifeboat but uh, there were plenty of first class people in, in that tragedy that passed away right the fact that her family did not perish physically or spiritually had absolutely nothing to do with the worldly goods she had counted on for the wagon and all it carried had to be abandoned along the way because it was too heavy and cumbersome to travel through the mountains anyway the possessions that saved Margaret and those she loved were of spirit, her wits, her faith, and her courage. And I would probably say her knowledge, too, because she was pretty smart about having them eat things in nature and stuff. So, so Sarah ties this into her own feelings about, well, the name of this entry, again, was called By Love Possessed. So she ties it into her own belief. And I'm going to read her words because they'll, they'll capture what she wants to say the best. But her own beliefs that love is really what matters the most and our possessions are secondary. These are her words. Here's what I believe. I believe our possessions can be very revealing, offering insights into our personalities in intimate and illuminating ways. I believe surrounding ourselves with objects that speak to our soul can bring us authentic moments of pleasure. But I do not believe our possessions define us. Instead, I believe it's what you love that express and authentic that wait, it's what you love that expresses the authentic woman you are, not what you own. 
When Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis died, much was written about her style and strength, her grace and beauty. If ever there was a woman who lived by her own lights, it was Jackie. Yet here was a woman who could have had virtually anything she wanted in the world, and yet her most prized possession was her privacy, a gift you and I probably don't think about very much. But what struck even a deeper chord with me was her son's recollection of what meant the most to her. And these are, this is a quote, the love of words, the bonds of home and family, and her spirit of adventure. Her passion to find this extraordinary woman. Sarah says, today I wish for you, as I wish for myself, that when our authentic adventure comes to a close, we can also be remembered by being love possessed. What do you want to be remembered for? Think about that. It isn't going to be all the things you have. You can't take those with you. They're just things. But I do agree with Sarah that sometimes the things that you surround yourself with can really be a definition of your choices and, and your likes and personality. I like to have things. I don't feel like I'm materialistic and I keep things for a long time. So maybe I'm more sentimental than anything else. But I do like to have space and I don't have a lot of space right now, but I'm figuring it out. And then the other one that ties in well to this is called a bounty of goodness. And this is, is sort of an encapsulation of the the principle of joy. She reminds us, remember our principles that we're talking about here are joy, harmony, beauty, order, simplicity, and gratitude. And she says, as the year winds towards an end, the sixth simple abundance saving grace called joy joins her sisters. And I always say that one first, just because there's so much about the joyful simplicities in each month. And I always lead with that one. But that is really the final one. Like if you can master all of the other principles or, well, we did talk about how it's a golden thread of all of them being to combined together in a tapestry. So it's not like you have to have one to graduate to the other. They're really intertwined. But it does seem like the final product would be joy, right? I think that's what I even said in that January video about joy when we were going through the individual principles. And so she's uh, sharing a story about how she loves to collect catalogs and things and and about how when you do live a little bit more simply or you live what she calls closer to the earth, hopefully you're not homeless, but when you live in a way where your possessions are not so much of what you care about the workings of cause and effect are everywhere as visible in the world of seed and harvest. So that's actually about the harvest season too, right? That the workings of cause and effect are prevalent in every season, whether there's seeds there or not. There's things happening during the winter under the ground to make things come alive again in the spring. You can plant bulbs in the fall and then they'll grow in the spring. And so it doesn't matter what season it is. There's still activity going on and there's still a bounty of goodness whether we're in the harvest season, which we are. We're kind of near the end of it, but oh, we've just gone through it. But whether we're through that or not, there's always goodness in the world. Oh, and then she talks about the word gleaning. Remember we, we learned that word puttering, or her definition of the word puttering earlier in the year? Her definition of gleaning is sort of scavenging. Is that the word? Scavenging? Scavenging for things like at thrift shops or going out and picking berries from the earth. And so finding these little deals that you can glean, glean from around you.
It is up to us to distinguish between the bitter and the sweet among our memories as we glean, gather in, and let go. Weeping may endure for many seasons of our lives, but we can also ask to be surprised by joy. Hmm. I think C.S. Lewis has a book. It might be called Surprised by Joy. He's the writer of the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe books, but he also had adult philosophy and religion sort of books. I'll have to look up what that was, but that sort of made me think of that. Surprised by Joy. Let me know what you think about that. Where are you on the joy spectrum? Are you finding your way there? So the final thing I want to talk about is the things for the personal safety and caution closet area that we're gathering. You would be so proud of me. I have so many supplies now. I am ready if something happens for the most part. There's a couple of things that I wish that I had already gotten, but I will get them. But if something happens, I have plenty of food and toilet paper and water and cat food and things that I need. So here we are talking about, um, wait a minute. Oh, okay. So we're talking about in this one, she's talking to us about personal safety gadgets. And I, I never did the video of my car. Maybe I still could. I don't know. We just had snow today here where I live. So it might be getting too cold, but I did want to get what she mentions here. And that's one of the things that I wanted to have in my car is that personal safety device where you can rip your seatbelt open. You can smash the window. You can do about five different things with it. And she said, Sarah says she's given it as gift before. So that would be a good thing, not only probably to have in your car, but potentially at home too, because it's it's a safety gadget. She also mentions things like, um, you know, GPS and things that you can have for personal safety or ADT, like a security home, home security system, or maybe it's having an emergency button or mace or these are safety things that you have either with you or available to you. And that's a part of this whole caution closet example. So we have the first aid kit and other things like we're preparing for whatever could happen and needing supplies and, and having things that you might need to protect yourself too. So that's what she's talking about today, our personal safety gadgets. So take a look at that. It's on page 40, 485 and 486. We're way beyond page 40 in this book here. So that's really, that's really the last of it. I guess I should also say, because happy Halloween, by the way, this is uh, the August 31st entry in the new book. It's called Making Room for Mystery, Awaken the Magic. Are you doing anything for Halloween? Sometimes when we're adults, if there's no kids around, it might not be a very festive day. I actually bought a, a mask that had a jack-o'-lantern face on it, and I wore it one of the days at work leading up to today and I didn't have anybody have a positive or fun reaction to it. Like I thought maybe people would be like, oh, that's really cute or whatever. I don't know if people were disturbed or it made me look really weird, but I decided not to wear it today because I had already worn it on the other day. And anyway, I thought it was gonna be really fun, but I didn't get, I, there, nobody even said anything, which makes me think like, you know when you get your hair cut and it looks awful and then, well, somebody might say, oh, did you get your hair cut? But, or like nobody says anything, then you know it's really bad. <laughs> like, I was just trying to have a little bit of fun with that. Um, anyway, that was all I did to dress up though. Um, Halloween comes down to us from the pre-Christian -Christ Celtic festival of Samhain. 
It's held on October 31st, the last autumn night before the cold and bleakness of winter. On this night, considered the Celtic New Year, the Druids believed that the supernatural world drew closer to the physical world, so human beings were more susceptible to the power and influence of the unseen. Magic spells could be cast more easily, divination, that's predicting fortunes, was more revealing, and dreams held special significant significance. And you know, it's a full moon also. I heard something that this is the first time it's been a full moon in for the entire world and since 1944, which is pretty cool because I am 44 this year. So that really stuck out to me. So that 1944 caught my attention. So she goes on to talk about some little rituals that you can do, you know, um, lighting candles. Maybe you can make it a little festive night tonight. Yeah, and she just goes on to talk about how magic is everywhere. And I don't think she means any sort of, um, you know, like Harry Potter sort of magic. I think she's meaning like the magic and the wonderment of nature and things like that. Souls searching for wholeness could be healed with the magic of your command. Go directly to the source. Acknowledge your lineage and your authentic gifts with a grateful heart. Hmm. You could look more into that Samhain holiday. It's actually pro uh, it's pronounced Samhain, but it's spelled S-A-M-H-A-I-N. That's one of the the holidays, remember I talked to you guys about the equinox in the fall and um, things like the maypole and these are all things that go back to pre-Christian times. So we have our fun sort of American way of celebrating Halloween but hopefully you could think about some little magic or fun that you could do. Maybe carve a pumpkin or just light some candles, have some candy. I know it's not a typical year this year with everything that we're going through but hopefully you can find some magic somehow and have some joy like we've talked about so that's a wrap on october i'll be back with you for the november joyful simplicities on the next video and we'll start a new month and maybe i'll do some more videos than i did in october thanks for being here as always love to you all and i'll see you next time